I grabbed my camera out of the river. <laughs> That's a good one too. Oh my God. What a trip. Good morning, everybody. I am about to go on the first backcountry fishing trip of the year and I am so excited. This is the face of a girl who has been looking forward to this backcountry fishing trip for months and has no idea that these next three days will look a little different than she imagined. I am currently in Missouri. I'm back with Sam and Dan and Chris is with us and we are about to do like a little vehicle exchange dropping things off. We're gonna hit Bass Pro. I have a few things that I wanna get. Of course, I wanna talk to people about what the, what the fish are biting on these days. And then two hours south to a trailhead hiking in to the Buffalo River. Akila and I would like to introduce this week's entertainment. We have Sam, Dan, Chris, and Kobuk. Are you ready to go on a hike? We got a little bit later of a start than we had wanted. I needed to set up my new backcountry reel and get some more flies because right now I'm kind of set up for everything that I was doing last year but this is really my first time being in the Midwest with a fly rod so I was just gonna say do something sexy. More like do something not sexy for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I do is Yeah, we're gonna go down here to just above the rocks. The day that we hit the trailhead was beautiful. The sun was shining, it was a little bit damp from previous rain, but the trail was really great. We ended up needing to do a total of four river crossings. Now, if you're familiar with any like backcountry stuff, you know that it's hard to be really sure of water levels, especially when it's a river. The first two river crossings went super smooth. There were a few deep portions that we were easily able to navigate and figure out a good route for the dogs. But then we hit river crossing number three. I think this is a good time for me to mention that I've done trips like this countless times and I have always held my camera. So I think I had a little bit of a false confidence going into this one. Well, Linnea just slipped and fell with her camera in the water and Dan went to go help people know where to where to get down river. So a little eventful eventful moment. Well, we were trying to cross this river and a little bit farther downstream, Sam and Dan crossed, but it was too deep for the dogs, so they got kind of swept down. So Chris and I thought it would be a good idea to come upstream, but it's super slick, there's a lot of bedrock and I just walked right in. <laughs> my feet kind of slipped out from under me and then in I went and my entire camera um, went under as well. And we don't know, we don't know what the verdict is yet. I'm drying it out still. Here's my wet dead cat. My first thought when I slipped into that river was my camera. 
immediately I searched for my camera around me. I didn't even care that I was soaking wet. <laughs> I grabbed my camera out of the river, held it up above me and said, take my camera, take my camera. Chris grabbed it and just started pouring water out of all of it. We took the camera apart and laid it all out just so things could drip dry, but it was getting late and we wanted to get to camp, so I decided to just wrap everything up in clothes, and I also had like a microfiber towel. I loaded everything up. We got to river crossing number four, which was quick and easy, and at the base of that trail, right on the river, was a natural spring, so we took some time to fill up our water filter, and I topped off my water bottle too. And I must say there is nothing much more satisfying than filling up from a natural spring and drinking right from the earth. So do you want to go uphill right away or less incline but longer? Uh, more incline. More incline less. faster? I agree. Before I move on to sharing any more adventures or mishaps of this trip, I want to give a huge thank you to Reddington for sponsoring today's video. When this partnership came to be, I was over the moon excited because my very first fly fishing pole, the one that I learned on and carried into the backcountry for the first time, was The Path by Reddington. And it has come with me into some of the most beautiful mountains and traveled to some of the most beautiful streams and caught some of the most beautiful fish. But I will admit, for backcountry stuff, it's a little bit large and a little bit clunky. So for this trip, you will notice me using something a little bit different. This is the Reddington Trailblazer. It is made for backcountry fly fishing. The first things that stood out to me was the packability of it. Super lightweight, and I love that the rod and reel is separate. This goes into my fly bag, and this fits into the side of my pack. People have often asked me what my favorite setup for fly fishing is, and now I can very easily point them to that trailblazer. Overall, I have loved every piece of gear from Reddington. And for those of you looking for your own fly rods, I will post both of the ones that I own in the description below. All right, let's get back to the adventure. <laughs> we all got to camp and set up our sleeping areas and then had a luxurious meal of steak, potatoes, and onions. Once it got dark and my camera had been drying for a few hours, I decided to turn it on and see if it worked. It's not a good sign you got a red light. It's working. Oh, Holy it's shit. on. Should we see the record? I mean, if it's on. It's oh! <laughs> <laughs> it wow! That's amazing. Holy shit! Maybe you didn't really. I mean, you got it. <laughs> she poured under. water out of every part of it. Tila. I'm shaking. That is the magic of the Buffalo River right there. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Because you you put that over. It. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh gosh, it's a roller coaster. That's awesome. <laughs> Lucky girl. Wow. That's awesome. As you can tell, we were all really shocked that it worked at all. And then it started <laughs> to not work. <laughs> I did go, not go, think go, that that was going to work. It is kind of shutting off go, though. Go, 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 go. Shoot. Shoot. Do you see that? Yeah, I mean, maybe. Maybe turn off and let it keep drying out. Yeah, I would, I would kill it, let it keep drying out the all the way, just so that if there is any okay. water in it, it doesn't like. Oh, and now it's not stopping recording. The screen on the camera started to flicker and go in and out. The buttons stopped responding and there was very clearly water in the lens. My surprise and excitement very quickly puttered out into disappointment and regret. 
for trying to carry my beautiful big camera across the river. So I decided right then and there that I was just going to put this behind me. I was gonna let my camera dry out for the rest of the trip, not take any footage. So I went to bed that night looking forward to the next two days of fly fishing on this beautiful crystal clear river with my friends. And then we all woke up in the middle of the night to heavy rain and lots of thunder, which is a beautiful experience when you're sleeping in the back country but a little less beautiful when you're planning on fly fishing the next day. <laughs> it smells so good. It does. Once we got our morning fire going and ate breakfast, we put together our poles, organized all of our flies, threw on our waders and headed down to the river for a day of fishing in the water that was much less blue and much more muddy and washed out. Of course, any day that you're out on the water in nature, tossing your fly pole around is a great day, but I wouldn't necessarily say that we had a, a very successful day of fishing. Hey, I mean, you caught one, hey, so. Hey, to bed again? Buys dinner? <laughs> Chris won! <laughs> Should I get a picture with it? <laughs> But the day did end with a really cool surprise. Uh, that's a good one too. Yeah. I was old, I was young, I was sitting in the sun. I was tired I think this one is, of the run. What do you think, Sam? I was done. Life was great, life was hard. In a way, an awful card. But the rain stopped falling and the line on the floor. <laughs> That's brown mushrooms. I feel a little soggy. It's a little limp. <laughs> <laughs> I typically will flower them. Wow. Tastes good? So good. It smells good. We're all waiting for you to eat it, babe. I know. I don't want to burn my tongue and ruin my first experience. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so smart of you. <laughs> I mean, he finished it off. Wow. Is that good? That is so good. Now I want to go find more. Here, try like the actual flesh part. That's what... I mean, imagine a little bit of flour on there too. We spent the rest of that evening and the next morning spending time fly fishing on the river, hanging out by the campfire, telling stories, laughing, cooking food, all of the normal fun backcountry things. Then the afternoon of that third day, we decided to head out. We knew that the river was much higher than what it had been coming in, so we needed to take a few detours and the river crossings themselves took much longer. Kila, come on, come on. Good girl, Kila, this way, come on. Good girl, good girl, come on, come on. 
it's so good! Just when we thought we were back home, heading out, I was really looking forward to really drying out my camera, seeing if it worked, investing in whatever needed to be fixed with it. Um, well, yeah, then we met a few more obstacles on the way out. <laughs> you ready? Can you put it in, fir in low for first gear? It's in low. Okay, three, two, one, go. So, go ahead and back down to the flat spot again. Get a running start and we'll assist up. He's, he's not back there. So, we're, we're going to stay up around here and if you slow down, we'll, we'll get behind him. Okay. So, the roads coming in were all gravel. They were a little rough, but not bad. And they're doing work right now on these back roads. And instead of just gravel, they kind of laid down this very loose, it's almost like a clay base gravel kind of thing. The van, this is the second time it's gotten stuck. <laughs> All right, I don't know how this is gonna go. This probably won't stay there, but. <gasps> Are you ready? All right, Aquila. Yeah. Are you guys getting a workout in? Oh yeah, always. That's why I don't have a gym membership. <laughs> I just turned tra essentially traction control off. Ready? I'm ready. One, two, three, go. It's in a little bit of a rut. Do you want to try it? You know your van better than I do. Okay, bye everybody. So we found a chain and there's a tractor and everything. And we just don't know if there's an actual good tow spot on my van. Yeah. There's nothing to attach. Yeah, there's, the cause I don't want them attaching to a weak spot. I'm just pulling something out. Yeah. Oh my God. What a trip. got a line of people waiting for me. How are you doing, Go back? We got a Keila back there just chilling. Thank you so much. Oh my God. After way too much time being stuck on that hill and a lot of people helping and a lot of people waiting behind me, I finally got out. We made it. Crossing my fingers that nothing else happens this trip. We're almost to pavement. I feel like once we hit pavement, I will be happy.
I'm so grateful that there was that tractor there. Somebody else had chains. Of course, Dan and Chris were pushing on the van. Oh my gosh. A lot of this was because of all the rain that we had yesterday. What an adventure. I know. This trip was probably one of my favorite trips I've ever been on. Of course, there were some really big downsides. Um, one being my camera is toast. I ended up needing to invest a few thousand dollars to replace it. And Chris's phone also got destroyed in the river. So he needed to replace that. It was a bummer that the river got washed out and the visibility was really bad so the fishing turned from what's usually a really hot fly fishing place to a really not good river for fly fishing. But all of the things that happened due to the downsides of this trip make it incredibly unforgettable. I found myself laughing so hard. We told the best stories. It's really times like this that make those moments in the backcountry so wonderful. And what really makes trips like this stand out, not only is it the, the beauty of the place that you're in or the things you get to experience, but it's the people that you're with. And I guarantee you that there will be many more trips to come with the same crew. And make sure to stay tuned because there will be more successful fishing trips in the future. But for now, Akila and I are settling into Wisconsin because we are here to help my brother Noah complete his tiny home build of a 7 by 14 trailer. So we will see you next week for part one of the trailer build. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun.